I want to thank Research Consultants International for sponsoring today's podcast. They're a globally renowned lead generation firm that helps economic development organizations create real prospects. They've helped over 500 economic development organizations. Let me tell you exactly what they do. They facilitate one-on-one meetings for economic developers with corporate executives who will have projects soon. They can facilitate these meetings to where you travel to the corporate executive's office and meet them there, or you meet them at a trade show, or even have a conference call so you don't have to pay for travel. They recently launched a service called FDI 365, which provides you a lead a day of fast-growing companies that will be expanding soon. Their research has helped over $5 billion in projects get cited since inception. I encourage you to go to www.researchfdi.com to learn more about research consultants. As far as I'm concerned, they are absolutely the best lead generation firm in the business for economic development organizations. Call them now. They can help you create real prospects. Welcome to this week's episode of the Next Move Group We Are Jobs podcast. This is Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group, and I'm happy to have with us today Pat O'Brien with us from Milwaukee 7, which is a regional economic development organization in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So, Pat, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Chad. Why don't you start off, just tell us a little bit about your region, and I know you guys have had some huge announcements lately, so tell us all the good stuff going on in the Milwaukee area. Sure, absolutely. So we've got a region. It's the seven. Milwaukee Seven is the seven counties of uh, southeastern Wisconsin. So we're part of the Greater Chicago Mega Region, our overgrown suburb to the just the south of us. But we claim it's Airport O'Hare is one of our regional assets, along with a great airport ourselves. We've got about two million people, um, a couple of different metros. So, uh, uh, but the labor shed is regional, and since that's the biggest. Uh, uh, opportunity, I think, for economic developers today to help companies. Um, that's what we're one of the reasons we're focusing. But our purpose, our sole purpose in life, is to help companies and driver industries, those that export goods and services outside of the region, create jobs and invest capital in the region so that the whole region prospers. So, uh, as you mentioned, Chad, we've had some great recent successes. Uh, I think everybody's heard about Foxconn. Uh, and also the turmoil uh, surrounding Foxconn, partly caused by them, partly caused by the markets with uh, the Chinese government now uh, even more substantially supporting the making of uh, their type of uh, glass manufacturing um, in China. Uh, it's created a, a glut of the, pro- uh, of the product and also uh, lowered the prices. And I think you can see that if you go into uh, your local Costco and the size of big screen TVs. But the good news is that uh, they recently announced that they're breaking ground on a a new manufacturing facility for the size 6 television screens. And television is probably not a a large enough word. It's the interactive screens, the kind you might uh, see in a Tesla uh, or in medical uh, device manufacturer and uh, medical imaging things. So they've announced that. We expect that to be somewhere near a $2 billion project with uh, 1,000 jobs to start and maybe going to 2,000 jobs. And all that depends, of course, on technology improvements and uh, robotics and that kind of thing. So that's the biggest name, but we've also had success with companies like Haribo. The uh, gummies manufacturer have their national, their North American headquarters and uh, manufacturing plant, uh, their first manufacturing plant. They place that here in uh, Kenosha County. Um, and uh, they've broken ground on their facility, and that'll be 500 to 1,500 jobs. Yeah, the, the Foxconn deal. I mean, two billion dollars and a thousand jobs. That's a huge project. I know the. I know in the news it's been up and down and up and down. But my goodness, everybody would love to have that. So that's a real. That's a real coup for you guys. And and if I remember, it's like thirty minutes out of town in one of your rural locations. So you might talk a little bit about the site and uh, and where that is. Sure. So Foxconn, yeah, that's correct. They wound up sort of almost halfway between Chicago and Milwaukee and Racine County in the village of Pleasant Prairie, um, and a huge undertaking, obviously, for the village and, and the county, and the county wound up, uh, uh, as we were making the project and trying to do all the uh, upfront work and pay some costs to 
get uh, two, you know, 1,200 acres under control, which they were able to do in about a six-week uh, time span. Um, the county wound up actually supporting the town. They put a uh, TIF in place, uh, got that through uh, the legislative process, and uh, are providing, it's about $750 million of uh, infrastructure type work for roads, sewer, water infrastructure, lift plant, uh, police station, fire station, those kind of things. And uh, all backstopped by some personal guarantees and a guarantee from Foxconn to pay a minimum payment on the uh, TIF payments regardless of uh, how much infrastructure, how many buildings they build. So uh, I think it was a well-structured incentive plan. And if Foxconn doesn't use the space, it's a burgeoning corridor, the Milwaukee-Chicago corridor, uh, and that infrastructure will do somebody well because uh, there's a lot of manufacturing going on in that area. And, in fact, Haribo is one of the most recent uh, people to commit to that, that region. So the community option, 1,200 acres in six weeks with different landowners they had to deal with? Yes, there is about wow. 40 different landowners. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, these are the parts of the story that people never hear. This is this is real economic development when people are doing this. So talk about your actual organization. I'm always curious to hear, uh, are you guys mostly privately funded or publicly funded, or how does how does Milwaukee 7 actually work? What's your model? Sure. So um, we, are a, we are connected with uh, the metro area chamber. Uh, we're a seven-county organization. We have about 90% of our funding comes from uh, private uh, companies and private foundations. The other 10% is maybe 3 or 4% from the state, 3 or 4% from the city, and another couple of percent from um, either the Economic Development Administration of the federal government or through some uh, county and city uh, participation. But we're employer-run and led. Um, some of our favorite type deals are the local expansions that uh, we can help and keep a company here. And one of those is Milwaukee Electric Tool, uh, which is in suburban Brookfield. Uh, they're owned by a uh, Chinese company. And uh, 10 years ago, uh, they had 200 workers in the region, and uh, the Chinese parent was thinking about moving them back to uh, Shanghai. Uh, they had an R&D and training facility here. Well, we're on their third expansion right now. They have 1,400 workers today and are moving quickly to 1,600 workers. So um, that's a uh, sort of the unsung hero of these uh, expansions. So we try to focus on that. Great. And then uh, we're asking all our guests how they got into this profession because few people wake up uh, you know, when they're 10 years old and go, I want to be an economic developer. And I've known you for a while, but I've never asked you this story. So, uh, you know, we're recording it here. So I hope, I hope it's not too bad. But, but why don't you give us your story? Yeah, I was kind of back-ended, but um, I was in commercial real estate development with Trammell Crow Company for about 20 years. Uh, uh, left them, went out on my own, and uh, – a good friend of mine who ran the chamber asked me to come and run a catalytic community-based real estate uh, organization uh, uh, in the city here. So I did that. We brought that in-house with the uh, chamber. And about the same time, the chamber and the city were uh, looking, uh, thinking about how do we get regional. We went out and surveyed uh, many areas of the country and came up with the Milwaukee 7 and do uh, the business expansion and traction as the, the core mission. And um, I became the guy to lead that, and I've, uh, uh, as a short-term endeavor, mind you, Chad, and I've been here for 15 years. <laughs> short-term. Yeah, most economic developers have had five jobs in that amount of time, Pat. Well, Pat, uh, thank you for being with us today. Uh, uh, we have been up there with projects and different things, and you guys really do a first-class job. And so for any of our manufacturing companies listening to this, uh, I can assure you if you get in touch with Milwaukee 7, uh, they'll handle you very professionally. Pat, why don't you give us your website real quick uh, so these folks know how to get a hold of you if they have any interest. Okay, it's uh, Milwaukee 7, uh, the number 7, dot com. So, or you can find us under choosemilwaukee.com as well. Um, Google us, and we're right. We'll come up up front. All right, thank you, Pat. We appreciate it. Okay, great. Thank you, Chad. Have a good day. 
I want to thank the University of Southern Mississippi's Masters of Economic Development program for sponsoring today's podcast. We work with Southern Miss a lot, and they do tremendous research for us. Whether we're working with a site selection project that we need Southern Miss's help to understand labor and the market around that area, transportation, they do a lot of research in, or uh, whether we need talent from University of Southern Mississippi. We have hired uh, their students that actually work for us as both interns and full-time employees. So you can get a master's degree in economic development for the university and they have two options to do that one is mostly an online option where you go in a few weekends and one is a more traditional classroom option so whether you're running an organization and need talent or whether you're running an organization and need research you should really consider university of southern mississippi's masters of economic development program A special thank you to Younger Associates for recording, editing, and publishing this podcast for us. I encourage you to visit their website at younger-associates.com.